Today on the Inside Utah Politics, National Suicide Prevention Month. We're discussing the grip it has on our state and how Utahns can work together to reverse the devastating trend. Plus, three former presidents of the United States teaming up to help Afghan refugees get settled here in the United States. We go in-depth on their plan. Time now for Inside Utah Politics. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Glenn Mills. It is time to go Inside Utah Politics. September is National Suicide Prevention Month, and that's where we do begin this morning. Kristen Barlow is the Executive Director of Dance for Life, Suicide Prevention and Good Mental Health, and Scott Langenecker is a clinical therapist. So glad to have both of you on the show. This is a really important conversation to be tackling. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Scott, let's uh, start with you. Paint the picture for us here in Utah. It's really having a devastating effect in our state. A lot of us know someone who has uh, committed suicide and the impact of that, whether it's a family member, a friend, uh, especially among teenagers. Talk to us about the grip this has on our state. It's uh, a surprising statistic. The number one, number one, not number five, not number 10, the number one cause of death amongst our teens is lost by suicide. So all the things that we think of in protecting our children from harm, this should be number one on your list. And in Utah, uh, we are in the top 10 in the country in terms of suicide deaths. And so this is something that uh, state, local, university, community leaders have taken seriously. And over the last few years, we've seen a leveling off in number of deaths and we're hoping to turn the trend the other way. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's startling to, to think about that. The number one cause of death of young people, not car accidents, anything else, but uh, taking their own lives. So very important point to bring up there. Kristen, let's bring you in and talk about when we focus on awareness, there's a stigma to this, and it's really important to overcome that. So talk about the impact that can have. Oh, absolutely, and that was one of the main uh, reasons I decided to pursue suicide prevention and this nonprofit was because there is such a stigma with mental health. I have a son that suffers from mental illness. I have a daughter that also um, had some bullying and things in high school, had suicidal thoughts. Uh, these things are, are much more common than we think. And we are so good at taking care of our physical bodies. We have such great tools, but sometimes we do not have the tools for mental health. And there's a stigma with it that's for some reason, if you have a mental problem or a mental uh, stress or something that's happened mentally, that suddenly we don't have resources and there is a stigma that's associated with, you're not as smart, mm -hmm. there's something wrong with you, instead of treating it just like it would be help, uh, help uh, physical help. Yeah, and, and some feel shameful in having to admit that w when they shouldn't. Right. Uh, Scott, let's get into the pandemic because this was an issue even before that, and now we're seeing things multiplied because people are alone, they're isolated. What impact is that having? Yeah, there's a couple of factors that seem to be particularly challenging our kids. So those of us who are adults, we've, we've endured some hardships before. We've had down days, we've had you know, weird things happen. But for many of our kids, the pandemic has been the first big challenge that they've experienced. And we combine that with isolation, loneliness, and lots of time spent with remote learning or doing homework on, on computer screens, less time spent outside in social activities. This is a perfect storm for kids to have more suicidal crises. Uh, Kristen, you talked about your own children suffering with mental health. What, what tips do you have when it comes to breaking the ice and having this hard conversation when it may be uncomfortable. Well, I think it's just important to feel like that you can have the conversation. You don't need to hold back. You, tell, you talk to your children about everything else. Mental uh, illness and mental challenges are just as important as everything else that you teach your children. And knowing that it's okay that if they're depressed, if they're down, if they're having these suicidal thoughts, that they're not alone. That a lot of people have these things and that there are tools and resources to help them mm -hmm. um, that are out there that they, sh they and we are trying to let people know about those resources through our programs. Yeah, and Scott, let's uh, have you weigh in on that a little more. What, as a clinical therapist, what are some of the tools and resources available at your disposal in addressing this issue? 
Yeah, let me just emphasize what Kristen just said. Uh, so many kids, in particular, that we lose to suicide have never interacted with a mental health professional before. 40% have. That means 60% have never had a chance to talk to somebody who could provide some help. So the first thing is actually to bridge that gap, to have that conversation. If somebody were having chest pain, we'd say, oh my gosh, you're having chest pain, how can we help you? The same thing if people are having emotional problems. We should be coming with the same amount of vigor and attention mm -hmm. and care. And the tools, the tools are things that we can teach kids. There are things about, uh, related around problem solving. There are things related around being specific. There are actually a lot of things about asking for help. We have, a, we have a cultural phenomenon in our country where we sort of think everything has to be on our own shoulders. And the reality is if you, if you injure your knee, nobody's going to ask you to run a marathon tomorrow. So why, when people have emotional challenges, do we expect them to run those emotional marathons the next day? We have to make a breakthrough in how we reach our kids and allow them to be human and to be yeah. vulnerable. Uh, th that's a really important point, but uh, sometimes it's not going to be as clear as, hey, I need help. But maybe there are signs. So parents, siblings, loved ones, what can they be looking out for when someone may be reaching out, but it's not real plain? Yeah, this is the most common thing. So a kid might say uh, something about being super tired or not wanting to go to um, dance or not wanting to go to softball. There's just sort of a, a, a disengagement, a pulling back. And that's really hard in the context of the pandemic because of the isolation conditions that we've been talking about before. So if kids are, are having trouble with sleep, if you find them sleeping too little or sleeping too much, or if you find them withdrawing from social interactions, um, those, are, those are sort of big warning signs. Or if they're missing assignments in school when before they weren't, these are all things that are indicators of a change in behavior and you wanna dig deeper and sort of clear the air and make mm -hmm. it safe for them to tell you, yeah, I'm having trouble. And then you as an adult saying, okay, we can, we, can work on, we can work with this. This is okay. This is part of being human. It's not a problem that can't be solved. It's something we can work on. Mm -hmm. um, Kristen, we mentioned you are with uh, Dance for Life. So talk about uh, the element of being involved in an activity and how that can help lift our mental health. Oh, absolutely. And there's been study after study showing that um, physical activity um, I've been in the dance industry for 30 years, so that's been our physical activity. But any physical activity um, creates endorphins, and endorphins in, uh, results in happier feelings, feeling good about ourselves. Um, so being active is very important in mental health and to keep us um, happier. Um, so yeah, physical, any physical life, of course, of dance, and I've created this Dance for Life, um, because I think dance is very therapeutic um, and it can help relieve stress, relieve anxiety. We all feel better after we go to the gym, right? Mm -hmm. You feel better. For sure. And it does help with mental health having those physical activities. Okay. Uh, Scott, this is a show about um, politics. Talking politics can get ugly. Uh, any tips or recommendations on you know, what people need to be looking out for when you see the divisiveness and the vitriol across the country. Yeah, uh, I, wish I, had, I wish I had a great answer for this. Our kids are looking to us to lead and to lead with compassion and to lead with reason. And right now we have a lot of heat, a lot more heat than light. And so I ask all parents to take a step back and ask, if my child were, was, at, was watching me engage with someone on social media or mm -hmm. in a parking lot or in a conversation, would I be proud of the example I'm setting for my child? And, and if the answer is no, then you yourself can actually get some help on that too. Yeah. You don't have to be divisive. And I say this and I mean it, every child is sacred to me. And it doesn't matter whether they're red or blue or white mm -hmm. or green or purple or whether their family is conservative or, or not conservative or liberal. It doesn't matter. They are sacred and yeah. they are a resource that we should be protecting and, and encouraging. 
and, and, and I hope we can do that. Okay, very well said. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but I do want to point out the annual Dance for Life Suicide Prevention Gala. It's happening uh, this Saturday, September 25th at East High School, and it's an all-day event. So uh, get out there and participate uh, if you can. Uh, Kristen, real quick, how can people find more information on that? Uh, you can go to danceforlifenation.org mm -hmm. uh, is our website, and you can find out more information. The forum and the show are completely free. Okay. Um, and then the master classes, uh, you can sign up for those as well. All right, very so. important conversation. Appreciate both of your perspectives. Thanks for being here with us this Thank morning. Thank you.